انا بشكر الدكتور وسام على دعوتي لهذا الويبنر مفيد جدا ان شاء الله هيكون انا كده كويس انا طبعا فهمت من الدكتور هشام ان it will be a course and this course should begin with an introduction to what we are going to learn فانا فضلت ان انا ابتدي ب introduction to breast imaging by explaining the different modalities used for mammographic imaging and the basics of each as a beginning Uh, first of all, we have to know why breast imaging. Breast imaging uh, is done because breast cancer is a major health problem. It is the most frequent cancer in women in Western countries, yet it is one of those cancers that are diagno if diagnosed early, they, it is potentially curable. This is the cause we are going to examine the breast at the very early uh, stage of the development of cancer in order to let it curable. Many modalities have been tried to detect breast cancer, including mammography, full field digital mammography, uh, digital breast tomosenses, uh, contrast enhanced mammography, dactography, ultrasonography, automated ultrasound, contrast enhanced ultrasound, elastography, CT and cone beam CT, MRI, uh, contrast enhanced MRI, diffusion weighted imaging and MRS, thermography and positron emission tomography. But the one modality that has stood the best and the test of the time in terms of cost effectiveness and reliability is mammography, which is ranked as a gold standard. This is very important. Mammography has two, we have two types of mammography. First, the analog type and then the digital type. The analog type means that the difference between both techniques depends upon only the site of the detector, the type of the detector. The detector here is the X-ray film with a screen film uh, com composite, and the uh, uh, digital mammography depends upon the electronic detector. The difference here is that we affect the X-ray film by the X-ray, and then we take it for processing, and then we image the, the examine the image on the screening box but the viewing box but the, the the digital mammography the image is directly transferred to the computer and examined on the uh, tv monitor this is the analog mammographic machine uh, the image here shows that the tube is the, the machine is composed of a tube housing here the compression battle and the uh, film housing and this film housing uh, uh, will uh, we will introduce the film here through this opening and the grid is present in front of it we have a photo timer uh, behind the x-ray film in order to control the uh, parameters of examination this is the digital image as we see here it's it's the, it's the same as the uh, uh, analog machine but the electronic uh, uh, detector is present here and this part of the machine is changeable. We can change it by different size. We have so many differences between general X-ray tube and mammographic tube. General X-ray tube uh, uses both types of uh, X-ray, the, the, the type which is not uh, controlled and that the characteristic X-ray beam and the uh, mammographic tube uh, produce only characteristic X-ray beam. Uh, we have uh, uh, in the general X-ray tube, uh, we use a high kilovolt technique between 15 to 120 kilovolt, but in mammography, we use the 20 to 35 uh, kilovolt. The target filter comp component, uh, component is formed of either tungsten or copper in the general X-ray tube, but it is formed of molybdenum, and the filter here is formed by rhodium. Window uh, uh, in the uh, general X-ray tube is formed of glass, but that of the mammographic machine is formed of beryllium, beryllium or very thin uh, porosilicate uh, glass. The source uh, 
film source uh, film distance in the tomograph in the general x-ray tube is long it is either 100 to 180 centimeter but that of the mammography it is from 60 to uh, 80 centimeters and it is a fixed distance you cannot change the distance between the target and the film the analog the analog uh, uh, anode, anode uh, uh, analog is uh, is formed of 6 to 20 degrees tilt uh, angulation here 6 to 20 degrees but that of the mammographic tube it is 23 to 30, 25 and we'll explain this later we have different focal spots 0.1 to 1 millimeters larger in the uh, general x-ray tube but in mammography it is very small 0.1 to 0.3 uh, millimeter here we have uh, 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 embraced, uh, we have a very big problem that is uh, the difference between the soft tissue component of the tumor and that of the breast are very similar, are very close to each other. And so we have a low differential uh, attenuation between both tumor, between both components and this will hinder proper visualization, the assessment of the breast uh, tumors. But uh, this small attenuation difference uh, can be can be overcome by the use of very low very low kilovolt technique between 10 to 15. In mammographic machine, we use a very low kilovolt technique that's less than 35 kilovolt. Uh, uh, so we can get the uh, better differentiation between high absorption results between that of the tumor and that of the breast. This histogram shows the difference between the uh, tissues in the breast at low kilovolt technique at 20 uh, kilovolt. Here you find that there is good differentiation between fat, glandular tissue, and that of the infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Uh, also, the uh, mammographic contrast increases at the very low kilovolt technique of the breast. The system define, design here because of the risk of ionizing radiation technique, the uh, uh, target of mammography was to minimize the dose and optimize the image quality. Here we have to use the refinement of the dedicated X-ray equipment, specialized X-ray tubes, compression devices, compression devices very important, anti-scatter grid, photo timers, and detector system. The design of the, the tube here, the tube housing. This is the uh, this is the cathode and this is the anode. As you see here, there is a bevel in the anode in order to the, redirect the uh, redirect the X-ray beam downward. And then we have a tube port, the filter filter use. Uh, we explain it and the collimation collimation is manually uh, controlled and you can get the aperture width as you need. And then the compression uh, battle. Compression battle is very important in order to fix the breast. And then the film housing, the composed of the grid, screen film, photo timer present here at the, the, at the lower part of the uh, film housing. Uh, mammographic X-ray tubes typically have dual filaments. We have uh, either uh, uh, small uh, focus and large focus they are focused in a cup and this cup produces 0.3 and 0.1 millimeter uh, nominal uh, focal spot sizes it will minim minimize the geometric blurring and in order to get a high resolution special resolutions especially in case of micro calcification detection uh, uh, space charge effect causes uh, non-linear relationship between the filament current and the tube current and this uh, we have here a feedback circuit between the filament current and the function uh, uh, kilovolt to deliver desired uh, tube current the anode design is a rotating anode for 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 cooling and it is formed of molybdenum some machines use rhodium or tungsten but Molybdenum is the most commonly used type. The source to image uh, distance is 65 centimeter, and this is this needs uh, effective anode angle to be 20. The effective anode angle here, if we use the uh, uh, straight anode angle here, uh, we have to have a big 
tube tilt about 24 degrees in order to get a proper image size uh, up to 24, uh, uh, 24 by 30 centimeters. But that of the uh, 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 beveled angle, angle with, we have here uh, to diminish the uh, tube angle and the node angle here is uh, although it is low, it can cover the same distance as that of the straight anode end. The heel effect here, the patient stands in front of the, uh, of the X-ray film, and we know that the posterior aspect of the breast is more denser than that of the very areolar region. So we have to uh, uh, increase the intensity of the X-ray at the posterior aspect of the breast and to uh, decrease the intensity or at the anterior aspect of the breast. As we see here, the central beam of the uh, X-ray will pass through the posterior aspect. So this entails that the cathode is uh, put towards the head of the patient, towards the chest wall, and the anode is put away from the chest wall in order to get differential intensity of the X-ray beam with heights at the posterior part to transfix the thickened uh, posterior aspect of the breast and uh, uh, low at the anterior aspect of the breast to visualize the nipple and the to areolar areas. Filtrations, we use uh, different materials for filtrations. Uh, for example, the beryllium, uh, and it's used for tube, tube port, and they added tube filters uh, here uh, it reduces the low and the high energy side of the X-ray beam and then produces a homogeneous X-ray beam more than that of the, uh, without using the, uh, the uh, filter. Collimation is very important in order to put the uh, amount or size of the field uh, coinciding with the size of the film, that may be 18 by 24 centimeters or 24 by 30 centimeters. We have to use high energy generators with the use of uh, autom uh, automatic energy control underneath the cassette. This is the design of the machine. Here, the, the X ray tube. Uh, the, the collimator is present here, the, the sensor is present behind. Uh, first, we, we initiate or start by small dose of X-ray that passes through the breast, uh, measured by the sensor, and then a feedback circuit is going to the machine in order to auto uh, 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 monitor or also uh, select the uh, density, the uh, amount of X-ray that controls the uh, kilovolt and the milliampere second, and then we get the image. Why mammography? The importance of mammography uh, is the most sensitive method for detection of breast cancer, most important screening method, suitable for detection of lesions in fatty breasts, for detection of calcification, for evaluation of palpable uh, breast lesions, and sometimes used for uh, serotactic breast biopsy. But it is disadvantage is low specificity, it cannot differentiate cystic from solid tumors, can differentiate uh, 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 subtle changes in the breast, in the dense breast. Inability to differentiate solid from cystic lesions and it can miss lesions in dense breasts is the major, the major drawbacks of mammography. Mammographic techniques include positioning, compression, patient interaction, and history taking. The positioning of the breast is done at so many views, but the most uh, important and the routine views are the craniocausal and medial oblique projections. Other so many projections are used, either uh, spot compression views, magnification technique, uh, lateral medial, mediolateral, exaggerated craniocausal, uh, craniocausal with uh, for cleavage view, and roll uh, with uh, craniocausal with rolling of the breast. Uh, all these techniques are used in special situations uh, 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 at which you need to further investigate a focal abnormality in the breast. 
This is the craniocaudal right, and the craniocaudal view left. The X-ray comes from the superior aspect, and the uh, X-ray film here receives the image. In the oblique projection, it is uh, done either uh, between 40 to 65 degrees, and uh, here you get an image of the axilla and the axillary tail. This is the way of imaging. This is a craniocular view. The breast seal is boosted on the X-ray film. It's compressed by the compression bezel, and the X-ray comes from the superior directly on the X-ray film. It's called the craniocular view. Medial oblique. Here, the patient stands beside the uh, X-ray film. It uh, extends her arm, and uh, the, uh, we, we have to be sure that most of the axilla is included in the uh, viewing uh, field and uh, most of the breast is uh, uh, also boost in the field, not at the cutting uh, of the X-ray film, uh, uh, the part of the breast in the X-ray film. This is the image of the craniocaudal view, they are both beside each other, and uh, you compare the right side with the left side by putting an imaginary lines, uh, longitudinal and transverse line through the nipple. Here you have a different quadrants of the breast, the upper lateral, the upper medial, and the lower lateral and the lower medial quadrant. The craniocaudal view, we have here the uh, both breasts are imaging longitudinally with the muscle appearance, the axilla here, and the axilla is seen here also. The, this is the pectoral muscle, and the, uh, most of the mammary tissue is included in the examination field. Here we have the different uh, diagrammatic representations of the additional views of the uh, breast. Uh, we have lateral uh, uh, left axilla detail view. Here we examine the upper part of the axilla. The cleavage view means that imaging of the uh, uh, mammary tissue in between both mammary, uh, of mammary glands and you image, you focus here over the medial sectors of the breast. Uh, in left, uh, left from below, we can take the image from below with the X-ray film superiorly and the machine and the X-ray tube inferior and the uh, left lateral medial. The image comes here from the lateral medial against the uh, normally uh, routine view mediolateral. We use the lateral medial here. Here we have the uh, uh, left lateral medial uh, oblique. Uh, left uh, mediolateral oblique and uh, rolling. Rolling means that we examine the breast in the craniocaudal or mediolateral projections, but uh, we roll the superior aspect of the breast uh, to the right side, to the lateral aspect, or to the medial aspect in order to uh, visualize the uh, mobility of the lesion uh, in order to uh, 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 shift the superimposed tissues from the suspected area, and this helps us to visualize the lesion at a better uh, manner. This is an example of the cleavage view. You examine the area in between the breasts here. And this is the magnification view. How magnification view is done? We put a, a plastic uh, uh, box to raise or elevate the breast away from the X-ray film. And this elevation leads to magnification of the image of the region over the X-ray uh, film. And we can use also compression uh, spot compression by using small compression battle uh, on the uh, uh, suspected area. We have here what we call tangential view. Tangential view, you examine here. Here we have a, a, a micro calcifications apparent on the breast and was suspected to be the, the representing an early breast cancer. But you see here that in the tangential view proof that this calcification is present in the skin. This is a exaggerated craniocaudal uh, view, exaggerated lateral uh, craniocaudal view to visualize the lateral aspect of the breast in the craniocaudal view. And this is a rolling, uh, this is an exaggerated craniocaudal uh, view also uh, because the lesion here was not uh, apparent and we do lateral exaggerated craniocaudal view to visualize the lesion at a better manner. Uh, this is the right magnification view. This is the magnification part of the study. 
we have seen here a small uh, lesion with microcalcification. We want to know the details of this, so we make magnification by using the box and compression view in order to see the details of the lesion and its margins. How to evaluate these uh, lesions? We have to do uh, to evaluate for the property of the for the uh, to evaluate for the in, uh, adequacy of the uh, imaging uh, procedure. We have to do proper positioning, and then we uh, can use different features on the X-ray film in order to uh, judge whether this X-ray film is. Uh, adequate or not. Uh, we can use the transmission muscle, the nipple, the retroglandular fat, uh, the presence or absence of sagging, uh, skin folds, uh, exaggerated positioning, uh, cut off uh, the inferior breast or axillary tissue, uh, problems in image receptor size and motion artifacts. Victoralis measure on the mediolateral view, it should be convex anteriorly, not posteriorly. If it's convex, convex posteriorly, it is not uh, adequate. Uh, and uh, it should be uh, seen, the lower limit of it should be seen within the plane of the nipple, plane of the nipple. In order to judge for the adequacy of the craniocaudal view, here we have to measure the distance between the nipple and the anterior aspect of the pectoralis measure, which appears in about 35% of the craniocaudal views, and then measure it on the uh, uh, mediolateral ob ob oblique projection. The difference between these two distances should not exceed one centimeter, either by positive or negative. If it is more than two centimeters, so you missed imaging part of the craniocaudal view of the breast. So the, the comparison of the distance between the nipple and the lower aspect or the anterior margin of the pectoralis major should be comparable. Also, we have to uh, include the posterior glandular tissue, and this is very important because the retromammary fat plane is a very important space. And if it is encroached upon by a tumor, this will change the by reds and the degree and the, the, of the tumor, so uh, you should you should uh, visualize this the space fat plane anterior to the pectoralis major muscle. You have to visualize also the inframammary uh, cleavage and the uh, and the nipple in profile manner because the nipple is very important and if it is, doesn't appear in a profile manner in the breast mammogram, you should repeat it by the uh, nipple profile view. Exaggerated positioning is undesired. You should not use, you shouldn't use exaggerated positioning except when you need it. Also, mediolateral oblique, check for cutoff of the inferior aspect of the breast and the axilla and in problems with compression or cutoff may relate to the uh, image receptor size. You can use a small size film for a large breast, and this will lead to cutoff of part of the breast, uh, which will not be imaged, and you miss diagnose uh, many things that, uh, uh, that you didn't visualize in the breast. Also, uh, 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 motion is very important because the machine here is mm, uh, she has some sort of oscillations, and these oscillations will lead to blurring of the uh, margins of the tumor. So, motion artifacts you should avoid, or also by proper compression of the breast material. Um, lesion localization you can localize the lesion according to the quadrant, according to the Clockwise, uh, uh, clockwise position of the uh, lesion, according to the depth of the lesion from the nipple, according to the uh, uh, distance of the lesion from the nipple. All these parameters are used for localization. But here, if you see a lesion only in the uh, craniocaudal view and it's not seen in the mediolateral oblique projection, you can do the roll craniocaudal view. Around the craniocaudal view, superior lesions will move 
laterally or medially uh, when you when you uh, uh, roll the superior aspect of the breast well, if it is moved uh, to the same side so it is a superior lesion if it is does it uh, remain at the same side so it is in the posterior aspect of the breast the same applies for the mediolateral oblique projection. If you see the lesion only in the mediolateral oblique projection, so ask for straight lateral and do also rolling view in the uh, mediolateral oblique. For lesions in the outer breast uh, quadrant, we can do exaggerated cranial caudal uh, lateral or axillary tail view. And if it is in the inner aspect, exaggerated cranial caudal medial or cleavage view. And if it is in the retroalveolar area, we can nipple, we can use nipple in profile view. And if it is a skin lesion, we can do tangential views uh, with skin localizing projection. Uh, compression is very important because it reduces the motion artifacts, it reduces the player, it uh, reduces the change in the radiographic density of the breast because you achieve uniform thickness of the breast and the reduction of the scattered radiation. Patient interaction, uh, 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 we have to study the risk of development of cancer using mammography. When uh, you use uh, mammography, we can induce cancer in a very limited number of patients, but they found that comparable risk mammography, we use 200 millicurie for best their view with grid. It's a very low. Uh, very low incidence or produce very low incidence of uh, breast malignancy in a population of one million. For example, one would expect to 800 occult naturally occurring breast cancer compared to one uh, in, in every million uh, compared to one to three cancers induced by mammography. So mammography is not dangerous at all and it doesn't produce breast malignancy. Also, family history is very important. Risk factor for breast cancer is very, uh, we can uh, know, uh, use, uh, know them, and the complaint of uh, patients, including masses sickening, is very important to know all these data before doing the mammogram. Uh, now I finished with the, this introduction with the machine and how we can take the mammographic views and how these uh, views are uh, interpreted. Uh, in the following uh, sessions, we will start how to uh, uh, examine the breast and to know the difference between malignant and benign lesions with different techniques. Thank you.